Hey everybody, Tony here, and today I want to talk about doing time lapses on the Prusa i3 MK3. Now if you've seen any time lapses of 3D printers, you may have noticed uh, a few different things. One method when the print bed isn't moving and the head moves is that the camera can be fixed external to the machine and you know, on a tripod or some other fixed source. And it's able to capture the print fairly well because nothing is really moving other than the head. And then you can see the layer fidelity being built up uh, one layer at a time there. And that's a good way for doing it with a fixed bed printer, but when you have a printer bed that moves, like the Prusa i3 MK3, in the Y direction, it's very hard to capture something useful using a camera that is fixed to a tripod or uh, some other piece that isn't moving in the same direction as the bed. What you end up seeing is the bed moving very fast and the camera's capturing all of that motion blur and whatnot. And so that's not really the best solution. Now, other options that I've seen is that folks make a frame piece that connects actually to the bed plate. That way, as the bed plate is moving, the frame piece that they've made is moving with the bed, and that way they can mount their camera, like a GoPro or other small camera, to that frame piece. And so the whole mechanism is moving with the bed. Now, that's a good technique as well, but it has, um, it has some limitations, you know, depending on how strong your support frame piece is that you've extended from the bed or how well you've adhered it, right? You could get some motion or uh, some rocking in there or some bounce, basically, you know, some shake in your pictures as, that, uh, as the bed is moving in the Y direction. And so the last option that sort of compensates for all of that is to use OctaPrint and OctaLapse. It's an add-on for most machines that basically what it allows you to do is interface your computer with your 3D printer. You can send print jobs down just like you would send to a standard printer, only now you're sending your G-code basically down to your 3D printer and it's printing from your machine. Now the OctaPrint and OctaLapse hooks in and what that does is in between, in between each layer the print bed will move to a specific location, it will stop, the head will move to a specific location and stop, and then Octolapse will trigger a USB camera to take a picture of you know, your frozen machine. That way the bed is always in the same place, the head is always in the same place, and what you see is a picture of basically whatever you're 3D printing essentially growing out of the bed. It just looks like it's being printed out of nothing. Um, usually you will see the Z direction axis change because it doesn't usually move that. Um, but other than that motion, you really only see the motion from what is being printed. Um, that is a very elegant solution and it makes amazing time lapses. Um, so I wanted to do something very similar to that, but I didn't want to have to mod my machine to use OctaPrint and OctaLapse, and I wanted to do something that I could readily do today without going out and buying any additional hardware. So I went into Adobe Fusion, and I put together a frame piece, much like someone would have done to mount to the bed, only in my case I mounted the frame piece to the base of the Prusa frame. Okay, right alongside the Y axis range right here. I connected this frame piece, and what it does is it just gives me uh, basically a location that I could place a physical button. All right, now the way this works is as the bed moves in the Y direction, once it extends all the way out, it will push a button on the tip of this frame piece right here. And what that does is this button will trigger the remote shutter release of my digital SLR or any camera that has a remote shutter release or a bulb input. Um, now the beauty of this is you can use any camera. 
and you know it, it's just going to work for you. Any camera that has a remote shutter release. Uh, you can use any resolution camera, right? A digital SLR, you can use um, any type of still camera, basically. Uh, it's a very nice solution, um, and that's why I pursued this one. Being that I already had a digital SLR with the bulb input, I had button switches laying around and wire. All I really need to do is make the frame piece and then uh, essentially mount it to the, the i3 MK3 base. Okay, well how do you then tell the printer in between each layer to move the bed all the way out in that direction? So for that, once my G-code is made by Slicer, I basically pulled that into a custom program that I made that essentially all it does is just smartly scans through the file, looks for layer height changes, and inserts very specific code to tell the printer uh, to basically move all the way over here and park itself. The bed will move all the way out to the front and park itself. And at the same time, it's going to trigger, you know, essentially mash that digital button and cause the digital SLR to take a shot. At that point, I wait roughly about a second, make sure the camera does whatever it needs to do, and then the G-code continues to march on and print the next layer. And that will happen successively until the job is done, and I'll have an individual picture for every layer um, that got printed on the, on the printer. So if you're looking in Slicer, you can actually see how many layers are, are being printed. That's how many pictures you're going to have in your digital SLR. Now the things to keep in mind if you are going to pursue this solution, uh, as opposed to using something like Octoprint and a USB cam, is your digital SLR has a battery. So you want to make sure that your battery is fully charged if you're going to uh, pursue taking all these pictures because you know for some things you could be talking about a thousand layers right or maybe more so you want to make sure that your camera is charged enough that it can take all those pictures without running out of juice the other thing that you want to keep in mind is you want to be able to use a manual focus right so if your digital SLR is trying to focus each time uh, it's you know taking a picture of the layers on the lowest layer it's possible that you know the focus could be different than when you're on the highest layer um, and in addition to that focusing also takes some extra time and depending on your lighting conditions that could vary and if you don't have your timing set just right between you know the wait time after you take the picture and after this guy parks then you could have some issues with that so I would recommend using a manual focus um, now the other thing to keep in mind is obviously your lighting you want to have consistent lighting as it's printing uh, otherwise you could get some weird shadows or um, some weird glare depending on the color of your filament as it's printing so that's something to keep in mind as well and if your camera if you're using an SLR then it will have this but um, check your camera or use the options in your camera to set all of your uh, exposure and shutter and other settings to manual. You don't want to be using an automatic setting that's going to be changing any of that because it will cause different lighting effects based on how the camera takes the picture itself. So you really want to have the shutter fixed, you want to have the aperture fixed, you want to have the ISO fixed, you want to have the color, uh, you know, the, like the white balance fixed as well. You essentially want to have your camera in full manual mode so that you're not getting any variations from picture to picture because otherwise once you play these pictures back in a seamless video you will get some flickering you might get some odd things that just really aren't going to come out very nice so it's best to keep the camera in total manual control for the duration of your capture um, and so basically with that uh, if you follow all those rules, you will come out with some pretty fantastic time-lapse video uh, or stills that you can produce a video with. And, you know, you import those into your video program and stitch them together, play them over some duration, 10, 15, 30 seconds, whatever you want to do, comes out amazing. You know, the objects just grow out of the bed and it's a beautiful time-lapse. So I would recommend, you know, if you have the equipment already, 
give it a try and see what you think because they're they're pretty wild. Now, um, I will uh, demo or go into the design of this bracket a little closer because I know it may be hard to see right now. Jump on the computer here and we'll walk through um, what I came up with in Fusion 360. All right, folks, so here we are in Autodesk Fusion, and this is the bracket that I came up with that mounts to the frame. So this is the side that goes up against the left side of the frame, or right side if you're looking at the frame directly. That piece I have highlighted there will go in the groove on the side of the lower base of the frame. It'll actually insert in there. And then that channel in front of it, that vertical channel that's highlighted right now, that will allow the front bracket of the frame to recess into there. And this will just clip right onto the side of that frame and sort of hang out the front on the right hand side if you're looking straight on at the machine. And so this bracket is designed to work with a Wemos D1 Mini button shield. That's what fits in the uh, upper part there. That's what the bed will slide out and hit and press. Um, if you're not familiar with the Wemos D1 Mini, I plan on making a video on that in the future. But um, it's uh, basically just a little shield for a microcontroller. And uh, I had a lot of those laying around, so I used them. And it works perfectly fine. It just toggles a switch, basically. And so there it is. That's the frame clips right onto the side, bed slides out and hits it, and it works really well. Okay folks, and that's it for today's video. Uh, I hope you got something out of this, and um, I look forward to hearing your comments and seeing if anybody is interested in this particular bracket, or if you've done something, something similar on your own, I'd be very interested to learn that too. So um, share it down below in the comments. If these videos interest you, consider subscribing. Thanks again for watching.